If you watch my original series on building a hi-fi low distortion amplifier, this will probably look familiar to you. But if you look closely, you will find a few things have changed. The original amplifier used a switch mode power supply and everything worked very well for about four months. Then one day it went bang. And basically the switch mode power supply had completely destroyed itself. This is the power supply in question, although not this particular one, as this one is working nicely. But what happened to it? This little block here contains all sorts of components, some chips and various other components. But you can't get inside it. Well, I got inside it, but only by destroying it. This had basically just blown itself to bits and there's no identification marks on it. So therefore, the power supply is effectively useless. There's nothing you can do. None of the other components were blown. All these um, diodes and transistors here, fine. But this particular part just blown to bits and it's all encapsulated in some kind of pitch so you can't even identify what's inside it. Now I did contact the manufacturers of this product, which in itself was a major nightmare because it's all very quietly kept secret. And I haven't had the courtesy of a reply. So basically, if you buy one of these power supplies, it is what it is. If it fails, you've had it because one of my subscribers also had the same problem that this block of components blew itself to bits. So unfortunately, I don't think I can really recommend this power supply anymore because um, I know we're only talking about two out of how many we maybe I was just lucky, but the power supply blew up. There was nothing wrong with the amplifiers. In fact, when I replaced the power supply, it all sprung back to life again. So it was the power supply itself. So what I've done, I've stripped out the power supply, which you'd think that wouldn't be a problem. But there's very little space in here because the switch mode power supply obviously contains all the smoothing and um, the output is a, a nice smooth DC. But when you put a transformer in here, you then need this. This is one of the little modules that I've actually reviewed um, last week, in fact. So if you want to see the details of that, uh, refer back to that video. Now, the limits in doing this is the size of the transformer, because as you can see, there's not much space left in there at all. But the beauty of this particular transformer, which is a Chinese special, is that it also has separate windings for the um, um, speaker switching protection module and also, which you can't see on there, the front panel module. I can certainly recommend these particular modules. They are silly cheap. I think from memory, they're about $25 New Zealand dollars for a pair in kit form and they really really sound nice I must admit they do sound nice very neutral and very low noise now because space is a problem this transformer is much lower rated well in terms of voltage not in terms of current than the switch mode power supply so I've decided to use this particular amplifier in this latest format for monitoring on my computer and its output power now is about 30 35 watts per channel about half of what it was previously but there's no other way i can get around it a bigger transformer simply won't fit so it's now is what it is and um, if anybody from new zealand is interested in it i'd be interested in selling this particular one for the price of the components. Just drop me a, a line on the feedback. Now this is the second one that I've made and it still has the switch mode power supply in it, 
but it has a much improved speaker protection module insofar as the earths are isolated from each other. Most of the cheaper modules in this form, the earth or the, the return speaker is common to them both. Now again, if you look back at some of my earlier videos, you will see mounting this power module onto the heat sink. But this is the first time I think you've seen it in this format. Now, because the switch mode power supply doesn't have an AC output, obviously, if you think about it, I've had to put a small transformer here because the speaker module and the switching from the front panel requires an AC input. This is purely 12 volts at about 100 milliamps, which is more than enough for this purpose. Now, the switch mode power supply does in fact have some other low voltage outputs. These are the low voltage outputs and they use linear supplies to give, I think it's plus and minus 15 volts and 12 volts. Now, as this has 12 volts DC output, you could in fact feed that into the module and it would still work because um, the, the DC will just pass through the diodes. For some reason or other, I couldn't make it work without buzz on the sound. Now the outputs here, they share a common earth, the 15 volts one, but the 12 volt supposed to be an isolated earth. But because you can't get a circuit diagram for it, I've, I've sort of tried my best to uh, trace the circuitry through and you can see they feed these linear regulators by the looks of it off a separate winding on the transformer. But I've tried to use these 15 15s before on a preamp and I cannot make it so you don't get a buzz. I've tried earthing it in different ways in different places. So, and also one of my subscribers made a similar comment that um, whether there's a fault on the board with the earthing, I don't know. And I must say this particular complete setup produces 85 watts, again, as you would have seen from a previous video, into eight ohms and silly amounts of power into four ohms. In four ohms, the power supply does begin to snag. And as you can see here, it's 45 volts. Again, that's plus and minus 45 volts. So a total of 90 volts. Now with 90 volts, you're not going to get 100 watts. These modules are supposed to be over 100 watts into eight ohms and getting on for 200 watts into four ohms. The main advantage is this particular amplifier has a pair of parallel output transistors on each side and another one on the other side. So you do get a very good dynamic range. And I have to say, sound wise, I can't detect any difference between the two amplifiers. They both, they both measure extremely well, as you would have seen from past videos. But where it scores is when you start to play music with a high dynamic range. It really just gets very loud and clean. And although 85 watts probably doesn't sound a lot, you see many amplifiers poking out that sort of power. But as you'll know if you've watched any of my previous videos, to me, 85 watts means 85 watts prior to clipping. So at the lowest distortion level, and if you go any higher, it will start to clip and the distortion will rise to, well, turns it into square waves, doesn't it? Now these are the two amplifiers as they are now. The first one I showed you uses the um, smaller modules and certainly rate very highly in my opinion. And the other one uses the switch mode power supply and the larger modules. Now, both of these amplifiers, if you can look at the metal work, they're, they're somewhat different. Just looking at the heat sinks, you can see this one has a much smaller fin, but more of them. 
whereas this one has larger fins and less of them. Which one's better? I wouldn't like to say at this stage. It's probably very similar. Now, bearing in mind that both these amplify cases are supposed to be identical, they're not. And it, it rather looks like, rather than supplying a specific product, they're making use of stuff that they have floating about. This is the first one, and you can see the lettering is very clear. And you've also got this ring around there. It's actually almost impossible to see the printing on here. And in fact, it looks better to me than it actually does on the camera. On the camera. And again, there's no markings around here. Now this is the second panel I've had because the first one I rejected it because the printing was, well I'll show you. This is the front panel part of it of the one I rejected. Now you can see quite clearly the double imaging here and to be fair to the distributor I did complain about this and they did send me a new front panel but it's still not as good as the original one. There are the two completed projects. Now there's only one thing left to talk about. Now I've mentioned these before but these are class D amplifiers. This is the power supply rectification module again which I've discussed and here's the big arsed toroid. This is reputed to have well over 100 watts into 8 ohms and the beauty of it is being class D that's the heatsink. So it would be wasted putting it into a similar case that I've used before when half the money is heat sink. Now I've, done, I've been doing some tests on these and some listening tests and the, the school is now out as to whether I think they're any good or not. They're not as quiet as the other amplifiers, the class ABs. In fact, the, the, the noise level from those is for all intents and purposes zero. You can put your ear right on the tweeter and there's just no hiss. These on the other hand do have hiss on them. Now I don't know why it is but it seems that class D do suffer from high noise levels. I mean they claim silly things like minus 90 dB but I think that comes under the heading of bullshit because if you can hear noise from a loudspeaker um, when, you, when you put your ear near the tweeter, it isn't 90 dB down. It simply isn't. It's more likely to be about minus 60. And I've also tried to measure power using the scope. And you just get very strange waveforms because these are the components. There's a capacitor in there, choke, and another capacitor here and they as in with all class d amplifiers they never remove all the carrier frequency now obviously if it's if it's working at 100 kilohertz no tweeter is going to present a load to that because the impedance will be so high at those frequencies the tweeter won't see it but the oscilloscope does and unfortunately Fortunately, at the moment, if someone knows how you measure the power from these things sensibly, I'd be very interested to hear from you. But is it good enough for hi-fi? That's, that's the question. And I will come back to you soon on another video once I've done some more testing. It does sound different, but I couldn't at this stage want to put my finger on it and say what the difference is but they get loud. By gosh, do they get loud. So uh, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not doubting its power output, but quantity is not really what we're looking for in this game, is it? We're looking for high quality. It's better to have a 20 watt high quality amplifier than a 100 watt not such good quality. Because at the end of the day, apart from mad drunken parties and things like that, 
your average listening level is probably five to ten watts and but the main thing is the reason i like high powered amplified is because the dynamic range is almost infinite and it just makes it so fatigue free because you're you're not hitting anywhere near clipping point ever when you listen to it and even if you do have a raving party they're not going to blow up unlike certain domestic pieces of equipment i used to be in the business of selling hi-fi years ago and you can be sure people that would buy domestic hi-fi which is what we used to sell christmas time around about just about january the 5th in would come all the amplifiers that have been blown up because they've been thrashed and thrashed and most of these domestic products don't have adequate heat sinking so the moment you start poking some power through these things as you would in a party they all go bang <laughs>